Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, April 12th, and then we'll see how things look for Monday, April 15th. Before I get started, please know that I picked up a kind of a nasty flu bug over the last 24 to 48 hours, and so I'm recording this a lot later than usual, and even though I stumble over my words and clear my throat and so forth, there's probably going to be even more of that in this video, so I ask for your forgiveness and understanding in advance as we go into that. Well, we had a pretty significant down day on Friday, enough to really shift the short and intermediate term over to negative. The short term is negative. The intermediate term depends on what you look at. It's looking more negative, turning more negative, but all hope is not lost. We're still above some major support that we've been watching for months now, and it's at least holding for right now, and I'll go through that. We're also seeing some positive things coming into the market. We're down to the 50-period moving average, and these this is where the buy-the-dip people need to do their thing. You know, it's like, we're going up, we're going up, buy the dips, buy the dips. That's easy to say when the market's going up. We drop below the 20 period moving average. We come down to the 50. We're turning more negative. It's not quite as easy anymore because we don't know if this is the beginning of something that's going to be more negative. Right now, it does not look that way, but that could change. We've got a lot of geopolitical things going on that could have an impact on the market. And so we need to respect what's going on while at the same time looking at our charts because they tell us what's actually happening in the market. So let's go back and talk about what happened. We had a gap lower open. The banks came out and the earnings were not well well received. So we gapped down below the daily pivot at 51.83. We fell down below S1 at 51.54. As the day went on, we tried to find support at the previous low of the week. And I'll show you that when I bring up the intraday chart. We hit resistance back up at S1 when we tried to bounce. And then we fell to support at S2. Isn't this interesting? If you've been watching these videos for a while, you know that I've been harping on the 5110 to 5111 level on a weekly chart of the S&P 500 based on a pivot point. That was also a pivot point on the intraday chart in Friday's session. And so far, that level is holding. And that's encouraging. It's going to turn more negative if we lose that. Not so much intraday. So far, we have held that intraday. We bounced up off of that. But if we really start to go below that and close below it, that is going to turn things more in the intermediate to even somewhat long-term more negative. We were actually a little bit above average with volume. So we did see that pick up where most of the trading days we've seen over the last few weeks have been below average. And we are, we're still positive in the long-term. That takes longer to change. It's the short-term that's now negative and it's the intermediate term that's kind of on the fence and with a much more negative bias at this time. And it's about inflation, interest rates. In Friday's session, it was more about earnings with the banks coming out and then all these geopolitical things going on. There's a threat that Iran may attack Israel over the weekend. Don't know if that's all talk. Don't know if that's really going to happen, but that does have the market a bit on edge. Some comments. There are these concerns about things going on in the Middle East concerning Iran and Israel. Banks did end up falling on disappointing earnings reports. And then there are global concerns after China reported weaker than expected exports. Now, if you're the U.S., you don't care because you import more than you export. Well, China is just the opposite of that. They export more than they import. And to see this falling off a bit is saying, OK, what's wrong with the Chinese economy? Then oil did rise. It closed at $85.58 a barrel. And on a short-term basis, we're oversold with the 20-period exponential moving average. That's based on the S&P 500 price. We're also looking extreme when we look at the 20-period simple moving average study of those stocks inside of the S&P 500. And I'll show you those charts. And then our short-term stochastics are looking extreme negative. In the intermediate term, we have our S&P McClellan oscillator getting extreme negative again, and then our PMO studies. In the long term, we're lo still looking extreme positive with the 150 and 200 period simple moving averages. And it takes a long time for those things to really shift. The current scenario, 
Is the Fed actually done raising rates? That's really being put kind of into question right now. It looks like that part does seem real, that they, they're they probably done. It's, are they going to cut rates in 2024? And if so, how much? That seems to be the real variable that the market's trying to deal with right now. The dollar was up and interest rates were actually down. We closed at 4.5% for the 10-year yield. And the dollar, it's just really catching fire right now. And that is putting some pressure on stocks. The yield curves that we follow are still inverted. Sentiment is back down to neutral at 46. We had gone back up to positive at 58 after Thursday's upward rebound. Well, we gave all that back and then some in, <clears throat> in Friday's session. And our, we're still not trending, but the red line is on top. So we would default to positive, both in the short and, excuse me, negative. And forgive me if I say red is green and positive is negative, which I tend to do anyway. But look at the charts. Look at the text on here. I try to make that correct. But we are negative, but we're not trending. The ADX is below its moving average, and we're below 20. Our bias is negative with the down day, and I've switched our momentum over to negative now. Bias is, do we have an up day or a down day? Momentum is the last two, three, four, five days <clears throat> kind of taken together. And this is more subjective. This is kind of a conclusion that I reach where I try to let the rest of the video actually tell us what's going on. We did, And I don't have charts for these import and export prices. I'm just going to go through their numbers here. Import prices were up 0.4%. Last time they were up 0.3%. Import prices, when you take out oil, were up 0.1%. Last time they were up 0.2%. Export prices were up 0.3%. Last time, they were up 0.7%. If you take out agriculture, they were up 0.4%. Last time, it was up 0.6%. This, I do have a chart to show you later, a couple of charts. Consumer sentiment, the initial reading, we get this every two weeks. It came in at 77.9, lower than the 78.8 that they had expected, and also down from the 79.4 that we saw last time. And then in the same period a year ago, the index was at 63.7. Things were pretty negative. Think about April 2023. The market was starting to go up and really show some improvement, but there was still an awful lot of economic concerns. So folks are tending to feel a little bit better about things when you look at it on a year-over-year -year basis. Here's the chart of sentiment where we have the blue line ticking down just a little bit. That's the total reading. That's what I show on the chart and that's the headline number. And then we have expectations coming down. That's the yellow line. And then the purple line is how are people feeling right now? So the yellow line is looking out into the future. Then here's our chart. And I plot this here with a two-year treasury yield where we have been showing some improvement with sentiment overall, even though it did tick down. We're getting a little bit closer when we compare it to the two-year yield. Here's some Isabel Net blog charts. This is showing the four-week change in share buybacks, and this is something that companies do to prop up their stocks. They go in and they buy their own shares, so that takes some shares out of the market, and when they buy these shares, that helps pump up the price. And even though it's not as high as it has been, it is going up. That means that there's more companies buying than selling. And here we go with... And this was after Thursday, not realizing that Friday was going to be a toilet day. 2024 is the Rocky Balboa market. Yeah. Yo, Adrian, where the average return after a day when we're down three quarters of a percent going back to 1950. Well, they have this being up a whole lot. Well, didn't really go according to the statistics this time. Then looking at central bank gold purchases, where it's dropping off a little bit. These dark blue bars, that's showing the, the central banks that are actually in there buying gold as gold has been going up. And that's giving good support to gold prices. And then this is similar to a chart that I usually show in the weekly video, where it's comparing CPI. That's the yellow line here. That's inflation on a year-over-year -year basis. And then we look at the PMI input prices, and then they shift it forward six months. I don't have the 1968 to 1982 on here. This is just the same outfit that puts out a different kind of chart. But this is going up a little bit, and this could be inflationary for the market. Then we look at global equity risk love. 
It's in euphoria right now or nirvana or whatever you want to call it. When we're above this red dash line, that means that folks are getting pretty happy on a global basis about things. Then looking at a 4% rise in the ISM manufacturing, this suggests 9% year-over-year growth in the first quarter earnings per share or a 5% beat, okay. Or you can step backwards and do si do and turn all around and flip over. This really, what we're looking at here is the earnings per share year over year. That's the dark blue line where that's going up. And then the ISM is also going up. And that's more what we see in a, in a normal environment. Then earnings revision, where it's actually going up for the small caps. That's the light blue line. The large caps are going up, but notice this, the yellow line, that's the NASDAQ 100. These are the Magnificent 7 stocks. They're actually being revised down, and that could be putting some pressure on the market. Don't have anything on Twitter other than this cycle chart here. I'll see if there's an update to this chart over the weekend, but now we could be coming into a weaker time, lasting until about the 24th of April. Here's our intraday chart where we gapped lower, and the futures were pretty tame, and then the earnings reports came out from the banks, and we just just tanked down. So we gapped down below the daily pivot. We came immediately down to S1. We dropped down. We tried to hit the previous low that was set both on Wednesday and Thursday. That held for a little while, but then S1 ended up providing overhead resistance. Then we really started to go down. And notice here, this is the 5110 level. We came down to this S1 level. Bounced up off of that, came down, tested it twice now, and then saw some buying going into the close. So for right now, we're above that level. Intraday, not very pretty. The futures were pretty calm in the pre or the initial overnight session. Then we started to go negative as Europe was going more negative, And then we just carried that over into the cash session and trailing off just a little bit as things closed for the weekend. But this is encouraging. And this is something positive we can take for right now. <clears throat> The blue line, and I know it's blue, it's not green. The blue line is above the red line. So it, we're just showing on an intraday basis where growth is outperforming value. So that is something positive. Also, the ratio in the S&P intraday, when we look at a growth to value ratio, it wasn't up all that much, but it's, it's hanging in there for right now. And it has been showing some improvement. This could be some internal strength building in the market especially if support holds. End of day, we were down both with growth and value. We were down across the board. We were down about the same with the mid caps and down a little bit less with the small caps when you look at growth to value. It was a pretty stinking negative day. Even though we're showing some improvement here, we bounced back up. We did decline with the small cap growth to value ratio on the end of day chart. We also came down a little bit with the mid caps and came down a little bit with the small cap or the S&P 500. And we're just not seeing much of a change here with the discretionary to staples ratio. We're just chopping more or less sideways. Large cap growth, though, it's hanging in there. I mean, we're still above this longer term moving average. This is a 50-period a moving average. So this, this is more of the intermediate term trend and then longer term trends. So yeah, and the reason why I include this chart and the chart right after this is to give us some context. It's really easy to get caught up on the the intraday swings and dips and declines and thrusts and all that stuff. Sometimes you need to just take a step back and look at a bigger picture of things to get the proper context. And here's looking at large cap versus small caps. Also, this is holding up okay for right now. It's not falling apart. And here's the Wilshire, another broad market measure. We're right down to the 50 period moving average. So this is one area of support that's continuing to hold for right now. We fell below it a little bit, but then we closed just a little bit above that on Friday. Here's our trend where we are negative. The red line's on top and going up. The ADX is below its moving average, and both are dropping below 20. That means we're not trending or we're in a trendless environment until it turns and crosses above its moving average, number one, and then goes above 20. That's when we would start a trend. And then we look at either the red line or the green line to see, okay, which one's on top at that time. And that's the trend that we would default to. Here's the short term, also looking more negative for right now and just not showing a trend there. We picked up a little bit with volume, but the last number of days have been below average. Sentiment, this hasn't been updated for a few days. We're still coming off of a very high reading, just about at four. 
that's pretty extreme. It's probably going to come down in the next reading. This is updated once a week. The ulcer index is starting to move above its moving average. So that's showing that fear is picking up. Also, the VIX, not surprising. We're going up with the line chart as well as the bar chart. And we closed well off of the high. We really spiked up intraday and then came down and closed, eh, not in the middle, but well off of the high for the VIX. And we're really seeing volatility picking up, both on the bar chart on top and on the line chart. We had been getting some very, very low readings. Now we're seeing volatility picking back up. And the momentum for the VIX continues to be higher. And the equity put call ratio, this is actually kind of strange. And I've been getting some weird readings with this. I, it was finally updated well after I posted the video a couple of days ago. And it came in with a reading of zero. All right, well, no, that's not what it is. But it actually, it went up, not surprising, in Friday's session. This is the daily chart. But we're still going down when we look at the five period. It had been going up, but now it's starting to roll over. That could be positive for the market. And we're also seeing a real drop off in the volatility risk premium. Look at other times when this was giving us a very high reading and it started to go down shortly before we bottomed. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but this is sometimes what happens where we see volatility dropping off before we see prices going up. Is that what's happening here? Just something to keep in mind. Our advanced decline line, we are declining based on price and volume, but still above the moving averages. We're declining with the five period of the new highs minus the new lows taken on a moving average. And we saw a little bit of an expansion of the new lows and we're declining with the 10 period. And we're dropping more negative with the advanced decline ratio, both with the blue line and the red line just barely above zero, barely below zero now. Accumulation distribution, this is actually holding up okay. We didn't really drop down below the moving average. We were a little bit above it after Thursday. And we're still right on the moving average. Does this mean that the smart money is just sitting it out right now and just waiting and saying, okay, when we hit support and when we are ready, we're going to come in and buy? I don't know if that's what's going to be what happens, but it's something to keep in mind. Chicken money flow is chopping sideways, but continues to be negative. And the chicken oscillator, even though it ticked down, is still positive. And we're really dropping off with the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line on the down day. And we're starting to show a little bit more weakness with our regular advanced decline line, but we're still above this advancing moving average. We're also dropping off with the other NYSE advanced decline line. We dropped with the NYSE common stock based on price as well as volume. And we're dropping off with S&P. When we look at cumulative price, that's falling off and cumulative volume is also dropping down. Not surprising. Then we're looking at the fifth, the New highs minus the new lows for the S&P 500. This is more the raw indicator right here. It's just new highs minus new lows. And then I plot a 50 period moving average on top of that. That's what you see down below, just to make it a little easier to read. We're just starting to turn a little bit negative. We're barely positive here when we look at the raw score for the indicator. We're coming down, but we're still positive when we look at the 50 period moving average. So we're coming down with the NYC common stock, but still above the moving average, rolling over with the S&P mid caps. And now the small caps have actually dropped below their moving average. Now, looking at the daily chart, we're right down to the 50 period moving average. So this support level is holding for right now. And we were just a little bit above the moving average when we look at volume. We might have overdone it based on one day. This is just going from Thursday to Friday with the advanced decline ratio. That's giving us a pretty extreme negative reading. Doesn't mean we're going to stop and go the other way necessarily. It just means that we might slow down a little bit. And we're also seeing the one day rate of change from Thursday to Friday. It's looking pretty extreme negative. Here's the 20 period moving averages. We're below them now. So the short term has now turned over to negative with price dropping below both moving averages. And we're also dropping below the mini rainbow here with our 20 period moving average study. And that's turning more negative in the short term. We're still above the 50 period moving averages though. This support level continues to hold. But we're rolling over with our 20 period double and triple exponential moving average study and the lines are starting to come down. That's turning the short term more negative. We're extreme negative with the Stoke RSI, the Williams percent R, the CCI 14 and the CCI 20, our usual list. We're starting to get extreme with our 20 period exponential moving average just based on the price of the S&P. We're declining with the 50 and the 200. 
And we're negative, but not extreme negative with the force index. We're extreme negative with the short-term stochastics, declining in the intermediate term, and now declining, but still above the midpoint with the long-term stochastics. And we're dropping below the midpoint when we're into the minus two standard deviations channel. So this is turning a little more negative as well in the more intermediate term. Here's some other intermediate term charts. The balance of power is still below zero. That's negative. The go no-go is turning more negative with the lighter shade of blue. And we're getting down to this lowest low value and actually dropping below the red line and we're below the midpoint. So that's turning more negative. And we're turning negative with the TTM squeeze. We've been trailing off with the actual momentum of this indicator. Now we're actually starting to turn negative. And we're dropping below the double and triple exponential moving average based on 50 periods. And the red line is starting to cross below the blue line, meaning that we're seeing weakness in the intermediate term trend. And this is just to show we were actually outside of the lower Bollinger Band, but we did not close there. That's why we're getting a percent B reading that's above the red line. But this is turning more negative as well. The ease of movement is declining because it's below zero. And we're pretty much flat with the Arun indicator as the green line's coming down, the red line actually declined. We're still positive with this because when you compare the two, we're above zero with the oscillator. And we're looking extreme negative with the S&P McClellan oscillator. So we might get some kind of a bounce out of that, but it still has more room to fall if that ends up what happens. We are declining with the summation index based on price and volume. And we're declining, but not extreme with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So when we look at the NYSE summation index, we're declining based on price and volume. We're below the midpoint and declining with the Swenland trading oscillator. When we look at price and volume, that's negative. Our oscillators are all negative with the PMO and then PMO based on price as well as volume. We're getting extreme with the PMOs that are rising. We've dropped below this red line. We're also starting to get extreme with the buy signals. That's really going down, but we're turning more negative with the PMOs that are above zero. And we're negative. <clears throat> we're negative with the elders impulse system for the S&P. We're negative with the parabolic SAR. We're negative with our slope oscillator and actually starting to go down below the midpoint. The MACD is continuing to be negative and all of our oscillators are negative in the short, intermediate and long term. We're still above the 50 period moving averages here. We're declining with the bullish percent index, but we're still above 50. But the fact that this crossed down below 70 and is declining, that's negative. That's an actual sell signal. We're also declining with the NYSE bullish percent in index, but we're above 50. And we're below 50 and declining with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. We're below 50 and declining with the money flow, the ultimate oscillator. The vortex is now negative with the red line on top. And we're going back down below 50 with the RSI 14 as well as the RSI 9. We're still above the moving average with on balance volume. And we're getting extreme, <clears throat> excuse me. Getting extreme negative with the stocks inside the S&P, they're dropping to an extreme negative reading of those that are above their 20 period moving averages. We're also turning more negative with those stocks above their 50 period moving averages and also declining now after seeing good solid momentum for a long time. The 100 period moving average study is starting to decline. We're also declining with the 200 period moving average study. The Copic curve is negative. The Sean trend meter is dropping more negative into this more neutral area, which you have to look at the context. Since we're coming down, that would make it more negative. You wanna keep an eye on these FIB levels if we really start going to the downside. Turning more negative with the Heiken Ashi with black candles. We're also negative with the Kiki chart with the red bars or the red line pointing down. Ranko, it's like, what? what's going on here? I'm still nice and positive. The three line break is negative. Long term, this is what I've been talking about literally for months. We came down and just bounced up off of this R1 level. And this has been on the chart for a long time. We saw it before we actually came up to it. And we danced around this level and then we're able to break above it. Now we're coming back down. If you haven't watched any of these videos before, if it's been a while, why are these important? This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500. We came up to one of these pivot points right at the end of 2021, and that's when we ran into trouble in 2022. We were bouncing back up in 2023. We hit this pivot point, and then we, we saw the decline going into October of 2023. This time, we were able to get above this R1 level, 
Can we stay above it? If we close down below it, especially on a weekly basis, now that means we're going to need five days to really have this decided since this is a weekly chart. But we're also seeing it line up with shorter term support for right now. That's going to turn things more negative. If this area can hold and we can bounce up off of that, that's going to look a lot more positive. We're declining, but still extreme with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. And we're negative across the board in the short term with the S&P, mid caps, small caps, and NASDAQ 100. We're negative across the board with bonds based on price. We're negative in the short term. We're also negative with the commodities in the long term. And we switch back over. Oh, it's the short term here with the trend model, according to the decision point scorecard. Everything was red on Friday. It was just not a very good day. The equal weight really underperformed. So it's dropping below the S&P 500, which is the bar chart. So we're seeing this going up, which could be positive. This could end up giving some support to the market if the Magnificent 7 can see some strength. But when this goes up, that just means the big stocks are outperforming the rest of the market. The Dow did decline. It's below its 50-day moving average, but we're still slightly above this S2 pivot point. The diamonds are negative and actually dropping below this moving average here. I don't use this one all that much. It's a 165.1 MACD, and it comes with this particular chart, but I don't use it all that much. The NASDAQ still above its 50-day moving average, even though it dropped down below the pivot point. So this is another area that for right now is holding as far as support. The NASDAQ 100 also is seeing its 50-day moving average holding for right now. The Elder's Impulse System, though, has switched over to negative for the QQQs. The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative. The Qs are still above their 50-period moving average. We were able to recapture the 20. We lost that on Friday, but we were able to hang on to the 50. Other times when we came down to this level, we were able to bounce up off of that. First, we bounced off the 20. Now we'll see if we can bounce off the 50. Small caps, yeah, they got taken out and shot. They're hitting more into the lower end of the range and dropping below their 50-period moving average. Looking negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps, dropping below the 50-period moving average with the Russell small caps, declining with the RSI. We're still in a longer-term uptrend, but the momentum is negative. Mid caps, just a little bit below their 50-day moving average and did drop down below this support level. So that's a little bit more negative there. And we're negative with the mid caps when looking at the Elder's Impulse System. Apple, it, it's trying to bounce back up to its 50-day moving average, but it's still in a downtrend. Tesla is still under a lot of pressure, down over 2% and also in a downtrend. And NVIDIA was down as well. It came down to its 50-day moving average and so far has been able to bounce up off of that. The FANG index, after really showing kind of a breakout, ended up being more or less a fake out as we came right back down into this range on Friday. The financial sector has now dropped below its 50-day moving average, even though the longer-term trend is still positive. The dollar just keeps going up and up and up, and that can pressure stocks. Here's a longer-term look where we're breaking out above this downward-sloping trend line. Oil was up, and that's also causing some pressure. And again, there's a day lag on here. So we're looking at the short-term correlation between the S&P and the rest of the world. That's trailing off and we're trailing off more in the longer-term correlation. We actually declined with the 10-year yield. We were up with the 10-year based on price. And we're so, this is another area of potential encouragement. We're seeing the Qs to S&P showing some improvement here. Discretionary to S&P, no. Large cap growth versus large cap value, yes, that is looking better. So with the large caps, mid caps, and even the small caps, there is some improvement there. We just need to see more follow through. And we're still down below this extreme reading with our 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We're also dropping below zero with the 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio based on price and volume. And we're just a little bit positive here with the five period moving average of the highs minus the lows across the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE. I usually show this in the weekly chart. I wanted to bring it out here because this is turning more negative right now. And we're still going down with our Staples to S&P 500 ratio, but it's not giving much support these days. So what's our outlook for Monday? Earnings season? Okay, I didn't change that. Sorry. 
The technicals, this is negative. Okay, I should have changed this. We're still positive in the long term, but the short and intermediate term are actually turning more negative. I thought I went through and changed this. I apologize for that, folks. Okay, this obviously did not get updated here. I really thought I did this. Okay, let's look at the economic reports that are going to be coming out. We're going to get retail sales on Monday. That's a big report. We're going to get industrial production and capacity utilization on Tuesday. And we're going to get LEI later in the week, which some, they don't think it's all that important. I do. And here's just a look at some of the major reports coming out. Seasonality. We're neutral to positive with the Dow and S&P. We're neutral to negative with the NASDAQ. And we're seeing a little bit of positive seasonality during an election year with the green dashed line. And we're looking at the strongest quarter where even the strongest quarter ran into some problems. That's the red line. Maybe that's what we're going through now and not quite sure where we are in the Carson chart. Monday is the most positive day of the week. So we have that going for us as well. Also, it will be tax day. So after that is usually when we see some strength coming back into the market. Also, we've come down a little bit here. This compares the election years versus non-election years. And April ends up being bullish, but we're still in that positive time. However, according to Tom Bally, we actually still have yet to enter a week time before we see some strength in the latter part of the month. The warning signs, the parabolic SAR is negative. The bullish percent index for the S&P is below 70 and declining. And the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is below 50. The chicken money flow is negative. The ultimate oscillator, copic curve, and vortex, those are all negative. Our oscillators are looking more negative. They're declining after giving us extreme positive readings. We're still noticing these negative divergences here. And way down at the bottom, the momentum, my goodness, what happened with all this? The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative. Positive. We're going up somehow with the equity put call ratio. And we're still above that long-term, which could also be considered intraday support, that's that 5110 to 5111 level. And I've been calling it resistance. Now we're trying to find out, is that going to be support? Chicken oscillator is positive. The NASDAQ 100 is still above its 50 period simple moving average. The growth to value ratios, they ticked down a little bit on Friday, but not all that much. So overall they have been improving. Large cap growth is still hanging in there for right now. The financial sector, it's still positive, but it's dropping below its 50 day moving average. So our conclusion, we're turning negative in the short and intermediate term because we're seeing weakness there. But for right now, support is holding. We are negative in the short term. We're negative in the intermediate term if we fall below this resistance support level that we're talking about and the 50 period moving average. We're still positive in the long term though. Thank you. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll put the other videos out just as soon as I can. They're probably going to be delayed, but in spite of that, have a great weekend, and I will talk to you in the next video.